I just came from Serenity Orphanage and I gave them 20 books in Scott's name. And it's going to reach the kids that need to hear this story. They need, need to hear, hey, I can have a best friend that's a soccer ball, a teddy bear. You know, sports is fun. Discipline is good. You know, the morals, the values that we were talking about. Welcome to the SGV Master Key, a show where you will hear personal stories of triumph over failures and how others successfully navigated the unique landscape that is the San Gabriel Valley. What makes us different? Well, just like you, we have chosen the San Gabriel Valley for our home or businesses or both. We believe it is the people and small businesses that make this community great, and we love to share their stories with you. We always encourage your questions and feedback, and you can find all of our contact information at sgvmasterkey.com. Here are the hosts for the show, Russell Mono and Scott Warman. All right, SGVers, welcome back to another episode of the SGV Master Key Podcast. Thank you for tuning in. If you're a regular listener of the show, if you're new here, we bring you an in-depth look at the people who make up the San Gabriel Valley. And like we announced before, we've now partnered with SGV Now, your source for news, information, uh, resource, discounts in the San Gabriel Valley. You can find them at sgvnow.com and at Instagram at sgv.now. Well, thanks for tuning in. And Today's show, we have uh, a second now for the show. One uh, was only Glenn. Glenn was a, a, the only one of the, our guests to return, right? And, and now we have a second guest returning to the show. Uh, and this is a guest uh, that, that Scott knows. Yeah, and he has, uh, he's returning because of something new that has occurred. Our previous returning guest, Glenn, is just a continual <laughs> series of exciting uh, escapades. I'm sure Paul, our guest today, has those as well, but he's here really for a very special and really a very heartfelt, to me, uh, reason. And that's a book he's written, and uh, it's a book for children, and it's a book that I found to be quite sentimental, and uh, let's get into it. Yeah, so welcome back to the show, uh, coach and now author, Paul Ledoux. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me again. Yeah. So like we said in, in the intro, you, you've, you've were on the show before and now you're back and uh, you've, you've written a book. What is, uh, what is the name of the book and what is the inspiration behind this? The name of the book is The Magical Soccer Ball. And the inspiration is there's many different inspiring factors. Um, I've been coaching for 16 years in Pasadena and it just hit me like, where are these kids that I taught when they were four years old that are now 20 years old? I wonder if they still think about me and, you know, remember my jokes and whatnot. And I was like, it would be cool just to have a little story down, kind of like legacy, morals, values written down, something that I care about and put it down on paper, put it down in a story form and share it with the world. Had you always had this idea that you wanted to write a children's book? No. (laughs) I mean, yeah, no. So... You shared a little bit of the story of when, when you wrote this and how that came about, but can you share with the audience like when you actually started putting pen to paper or actually finger to, to phone? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so the my favorite movie, one of my favorite movies when I was a kid was Pistol Pete Maravich, and it was about uh, a young boy who was a freshman, made it onto the varsity basketball team by basically taking the basketball everywhere with him. And there was these montages of him dribbling the basketball everywhere he went. And I was like, oh, you know, it it was his best friend being an only child. You know, I didn't have many friends growing up and um, they just hit me four o'clock in the morning, woke up in bed just like with this idea and rolled over, grabbed my phone, and just wrote beginning, middle, and end of this story on my phone in the notes, and then just kind of put it away for a little bit of time. And then during the pandemic, I had some extra time and started researching how does one go about publishing a book. My mom's friend had done her doctorate in literature and had to self-publish a children's book for her thesis. So I called her and said, hey, I'm thinking about going down this route. You know, what are, what are some suggestions or pitfalls you would be mindful of me falling in and she kind of said you know self-publishing is the way to go don't get caught up with the vanity press don't get caught up trying to sell yourself to these publishers they're not really gonna 
mess with you unless if you're a Rollins or so I just started researching pulling my resources of people I had known who had published a cookbook uh, and just started getting it rolling found illustrator at art center college sent her the text put it together found a printing company and um yeah it took about a year and a half from I, start to finish i, I imagine a lot of people because i well maybe not a lot of people i'm interested in the process of from conception to actually getting it illustrated and, and then printed that whole process you know for people who are interested in publishing their own book but i imagine the listeners are, are more interested in also the the story the backstory behind that now that i'm a father i'm reading a lot of children's books you know more so than i ever had in my life uh the common theme that i i, I see in them is teaching morals or there's like a, a moral to the story right um but that's sort of you wanted to cement your morals and your stories in, in this book is that is that what i got from yeah not all of them just basically the moral that I was going for is, you know, everybody has magic inside of them, passion, you know, drive, whatever you want to call it. And it's about finding that passion and letting it flourish. And so the character in the, in the book is, you know, falls in love with this ball, becomes his best friend, takes it everywhere, showers with it, eats with it, sleeps with it. Um, it becomes his crutch and he believes that the ball is magical and that's what makes him such a good soccer player. And inevitably, a coach comes in and says, it's not the ball that's magical. It's you and your discipline, sacrifice, hard work that makes that magic. It's not the ball. So that's the moral of the story. Is that something you as a coach find that you have to teach? Um, not like that deep, but to a certain extent, yeah, it's like you can do this. You know, kids saying, oh, I can't do this. I can't do this. And it's like can't isn't in my vocabulary. You can. You're just choosing not to. You know, if you practice, you practice, you'll be able to do it. So, yes. There are some uh, people who grew up and they've never had a, a positive voice in their ear or, or been a part of team sports or had a coach or maybe they had a bad coach. Did you grow up with a, a positive voice in your ear? Did you have a coach who was let, helping you to see your own magic? Um, I mean, I had lots of coaches, friends, teammates I think it's a culmination of just being involved in sports um, you know I had one coach I can two coaches I remember some certain things that they did but they just instilled that love for soccer in me and so that's more valuable so yes they were a positive for a year uh, positive voice in my ear so this is this book does this book parallel how you coach your the kids that you coach and the, and the things that you're trying to teach them um yes it does talks about discipline hard work you know working together as a team overcoming personal challenges in a roundabout way yes how does this um parallel your own life experience so the story is the story of a don't give it away. I want people to buy the book. <laughs> okay. All right. Can, <coughs> can I say it's yeah, about soccer? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but it's about a young boy who, you know, has two friends. And it sounds like it's the story of a boy who uh, maybe was all alone growing up and didn't have, uh, you know, brothers, sisters, a big family. Is this how you grew up? Yeah, no big family, only child, step siblings that were in and out of my life. I remember playing in the fields by myself for hours and hours, dog, you know, no real best friend that I would hang out with on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. If you could go back, would you would you have a different? The book? Your, your experience growing up? No, not at all. I wouldn't change one thing. Maybe who I am today. Very blessed and... Um, honored to be who I am and be where I'm at in life. Sorry, I, I know a lot of um, only children have, have shared with me that they wish that they had a, a sibling to play with, you know, growing up or, or someone else there all the time. Was that a, a similar experience for you that you, you had wished? I mean, in hindsight, when you look back, like, yeah, I would have liked to have uh, a sibling that I could shoot goals on. But like I said, I wouldn't change it. You know, when you're in that moment and you're like, oh, I'm all alone, you know, I, I can't really remember how I felt, but um, I'm happy 
that I went through the experiences I did as an only child, as being raised by my mother and stepfather and, you know, having somewhat of a weird relationship with my biological father and all the drama that came with that. Um, some people would call it trauma. I don't, I just see it as an obstacle that I overcame that made me who I am today that instilled in me the values of like being that coach, being that positive voice in their ear, you know, even though I'm not their father, seeing what my coaches did for me, they kind of were like a father figure to me. They were kind of like a mentor to me. They were like a best friend to me, whatever the case may be. Um, so p picking and choosing those relationships and seeing how they've benefited who I am today and where I'm at today and what I'm doing with my life. Hence the children's book, Believing in Yourself, you know, get involved in sports, find your inner magic, find your peace, find your happiness. Sure. Yeah. Hearing other people's story and how they overcame difficulty is, I, I think, a very powerful way in other people who, to help other people who may be going through the same thing. Uh, I, I remember when I was going through a very difficult time, my one of my good friends said to me, like, it, it's because you're, you're going to be able to help people going through the same thing later on. And I, and I, and I remember him saying that. I think well, that's pretty rough to say right now. Like this is my training, so to speak, to, to be able to speak to that same person, right? That I can, I can reach them. Why is that rough and not beautiful though? Like that's, so I, for example, um, Scott purchased 20 books. We were sitting in the hot tub and I told him what my ideas were for this book now that I've kind of gotten into the black, but it's like those experiences you went through are now your biggest asset because you can take that and help somebody that's going through it. Like that's, that's a beautiful thing in my opinion. Oh, ab yeah. absolutely. I, I mean, oh. because when he said that in the moment I was in the thick of it and I said, that's, that's a rough thing to, right. to say, okay, that you, you're going through this really, really hard thing, but there's something positive on the end. Like I could hear that then and I can appreciate what that means now right but in that moment i was like that's really hard to hear uh but absolutely yeah i mean but the seed was planted in your head like, sure hey, there's sure. some good that can come out of this yeah yeah and I, and I remember him specifically saying and it was danny by the way danny danny said you will be able to recognize the same thing when someone else is going because you you'll see it in them and you'll know the words to reach them because you will have known the words that would have reached you like nobody else can like nobody can read in a book nobody can think oh I, I think this is how that person you know this will resonate with them mm -hmm. no, no one can reach them like someone who's actually gone through it right. so um i don't know if you if you uh want to get into that uh what you had described as as trauma uh but how did you overcome how did you overcome that a you were referring to your, your a biological <laughs> a lot of um just my inner child crying out and just realizing hey you know what, uh, coming to peace with who my father is, I'm not going to change him. He did the best that he could. Um, you know, my stepfather always putting um, a higher value on work than spending time with me. Um, it doesn't have anything to do with me, not taking anything personally. Um, it made me who I am today, accepting, you know, I'm not going to carry that shit around with me the rest of my life and let it affect my relationships with women you know oh i have abandonment issues so i don't trust you or i have insecurity issues so i don't want to open myself up to that um trial and tribulation trial and error whatever you want to call it just realizing something's off with me what is it okay let me go to therapy uh Therapist being like, hey, you work with children. You wrote a children's book. You started a nonprofit for children. Your inner child's screaming out. Like, get, just give them a hug. Just say, hey, I got you. You know what? Okay, cool. You know, that's how I overcame it. It was just realizing that everything anybody did, they didn't do it to me. You know, they were just living their life. Cool. How do I deal with that? Seeing that it made me who I am today, I really value being there for kids being that positive um, voice in their ear like hey if you want to talk i'm here let's go have fun let's go play you know let's let's do something whatever the case be fishing playing sports just talk hide and go seek you know you have and if it's not me here's a group of kids that you can play with and and offering that to them as well so here's somewhere where you can go where you can find refuge like you said when you're in the thick of it it's not going to resonate as well as when you're out of it 
but if you plant that seed like hey you can always have a place to come and be at peace it's on the soccer field for me dodgeball whatever you have a place where you can come you can be a part of a community a team you can overcome personal challenges together you can find some peace some happiness and get a little distance between you and whatever trauma you're going through whatever difficulties you're going through how often do we see that a current generation mirrors its you know their parents and you just repeat the same mistakes generation after generation how do you stop that vicious cycle you know mm-hmm. and you're saying you did it through therapy mm-hmm. uh, and, and that you have st- hopefully stopped that you know whatever was dysfunctional at the previous level you know is not going to be dysfunctional at this level i hope not i don't have any kids yet of my own yeah so you know time will tell but i i feel like i've you know given a lot of myself and time to these children that i work with and that's what i was always looking for when i was a kid you know do you feel i guess this sort of answers that question but do you feel like you're sort of healing that that part of you through coaching through being there in a way that maybe you wished uh, someone was there for you through writing this book that you're healing through those works? Yes, I do. Awesome. I mean, I'm 37 years old and get to go play sports <laughs> for a living. Yeah. You you mentioned uh, that you sat on this uh, book for some time. W- what was the push to, to get you going again on it? Uh, trauma, a breakup, oh. abandonment issues again. <laughs> Okay. Wait a minute. I thought the cycle had ended. <laughs> well, no, uh, the, the, the cycle was had ended and has ended in the past year or so. But I went through a, a very tumultuous breakup almost two years ago. And it was just like, what do I do with myself? And it was like, okay, let me just focus on what's in front of me. You've been sitting on this book. Let's get involved in that. You've been wanting to start a nonprofit. Let's get involved with that. Um, so you're taking action yeah just taking action you know the therapist was like hey you should try and do something different okay let me research this let me research that how do i start a nonprofit? how do i start to write and self-publish a children's book and just getting into the work that was in front of me so it was pain you know change comes from pain i feel like you know that's one of those things you know when we're sick and tired of being sick and tired then we do something about it so it was like this relationship really took me through the ringer and it was like okay i need to change and um now you had said you woke up at four in the morning and you wrote the book mm-hmm. so basics you know beginning middle and end okay there's a boy you filled you in found a ball boom yeah you know the arc that so happens. that whole um was that an original thought at that time, or had this been formulating in your it was, mind? I think an original thought. So it's yeah. just like you woke up at four o'clock, and this uh, book presented itself to you. Mm-hmm. And it's happened multiple times where I've woken up, had an idea for a movie, I've written a couple of screenplays, again on my phone, and haven't done anything with them. REM sleep, I feel like, is something one of those realms one of those sleeps where your filters are off and your a creativity is flowing and you're you know why do we dream these elaborate dreams jumping from building to building and it's like that's where a lot of creative processes start and then that's a big reason why people have you know notebooks dream books whatever near their bedside so that they can jot that stuff down but that's interesting you've been coaching for i don't remember how long 16 years, 16 years. um ha- have you always thought of yourself as a creative person i have yes so you're a creative type yes okay I- i'm curious about this bad relationship only because i, I exited a, a bad relationship <laughs> you want to like, get into one or no no <laughs> yeah, it wasn't like, a so bad relationship it was just a breakup that came out of the blue and was like oh i i really want to spend the rest of my life with this person you know, I, I saw a quote the other day. It was like, the most cruel thing the universe can do is give you the right person at the wrong, wrong time. Oh. And it was, you know, I still deeply love this person. Um, but it was just like, wow, here you go. I'm, I'm breaking up with you. And I was like, okay. Whew. 
You didn't have any home. warning signs? I mean, were you not really. blinding yourself to it or? No, I mean, it's, I've had some separation now where I've, you know, been able to take my emotions out of it. And it was like, it was just bottom line, bad timing. Oh, yeah. that's rough. I, actually, that's uh, different than what I was thinking. Different from, from my experience, definitely. But I, w- I want to return back to the, the book. Thank you. So you, you, you sat on, you sat on the, the storyline for a while. Mm-hmm. You had this um, breakup sort of push you back into it. Uh, how do you go from, you know, just having words to, to actually having a book? Like, did you have the idea of what you wanted it to look like? No, nope. no. Nope. What was the next nope. step that you took? Um, I reached out to one of my clients and asked, where did you get your book printed? Went through that process to find a printer. And I talked to one of my clients who works for Disney and said, you know, hey, I wrote a book. Where, where can I get some illustrations? Kind of nudge him like, hey, you want to do it for me? And he said, go to Art Center College, put a post up, um, and then filter out through applications, applicants. And um, so I texted, emailed several different people. One person wanted to charge me $10,000 for the illustrations, a little out of my price range. This young lady, Yuka Awa, said that she would do it for 800 750 somewhere in there. Done deal. Sent her the text. She came up with the pictures. How does this look? Cool. Can you change this? Can you change that? Um, then she added in color, sent it to the printing company. The printing company sent me a prototype, gave it to another one of my clients who's a movie director and said, hey, would you mind? just taking a gander at this and giving me your honest opinion. Uh, Made some changes, some edits, sent it back to the printing company. And the longest that that took the longest is just getting getting it printed. It was printed in the US at this company. I don't really want to share their name because they had um, a lot of issues. So I sent it to them in November of last year. Said, oh, we'll have it done by January. January comes, nothing, email them. February, nothing. March, nothing. May I speak to your boss, please? Because, you know, this has been a long time. I understand materials are in short supply, but this is getting ridiculous. It's been three months after the the date, and I'm trying to plan a book signing. Finally, they get it done, I believe, in April, um, and they made a mistake. I had ordered 500 copies, but with the edited version, I guess it was 10 pages longer. And so he didn't charge me for the extra 10 pages to keep the price per unit per book the same. He just upped the order from 500 copies to 1,000 copies. So I get a bill and it's twice as much as I was anticipating. I said, what's going on? He said, oh, uh, you know, and then I saw 900 copies. I said, I only wanted 500, what's going on? And he said, oh, it's our mistake, our mistake, I'm sorry. I'm like, okay, well, let me buy 500 copies. That's what I've had earmarked to do. And he's like, okay, well, if you want to buy 500 copies, it's going to be more expensive than if you buy 1,000 because you added those 10 pages. So I was like, <laughs> I felt like I was being blackmailed into this. So I said, okay, just give me the 1,000 copies. So, you know, put it on another credit card or whatever. And since then, I, I went... I'm threatened to go to the Better Business Bureau and say, hey, look, this is my experience as a first time children's book author. You know, it took way longer than you had said. Then you made a mistake and made me pay for it. I felt like I was being blackmailed. Emailed that to the president. He said, oh, we're going to give you 500 books for free. I said, well, I already paid for them. Oh, we'll give you a refund. They sent me a refund for half. And I emailed the guy again. I said, you, know, you said you were going to give me a refund for, you know, 500, not 250. And so still waiting on the rest. Wow. Yeah. But that's just to get the physical copy, right? So from here, it's like, what do I, I had a book signing um, at Little Flower Bakery. Christine Moore is absolutely amazing. She's the owner. I went to her and I said, hey, can I put some books in at, on consignment? I had been doing research where... Do you sell books? Local bookstore <laughs> said, you know, hey, we'll take the book, but you need to pay $350 up front and we take 45%. Whoa. Yeah. So, and that's their top tier. At $350 a month, you're paying that. We'll pair you up with another children's book author and we'll do a, a book signing slash reading one weekend. Um, but we're not doing that 
in person right now because of the pandemic. And so I was like, okay, uh, that sounds like a good good deal, just to get it out there. Um, but then they never brought back the in person, so it's like I'm paying you, and I'm I'm I don't even know if I would be making money at that point. Um, so I just opted to just go to people I knew, and say, can I put some books in your store? You want to buy some wholesale, whatever? Instead of going the Amazon route, Amazon charges an exuberant amount if it's over ten dollars they're all about selling quantity not quality products in my opinion so their books is like one dollar fifty one dollar and fifty cent processing fee on every single order plus 35 percent is what they take and i feel like i've sold to the people my clients and now what i'm trying to do and what scott so graciously did is through my nonprofit, I just got 501c3 status. I'm gonna to go to my clients and say, hey, do you wanna buy 10 books and have it donated to Shriners Children's Hospital? Do you wanna have them donated to, uh, I just came from Serenity Orphanage in um, West Covina and I gave them 20 books in Scott's name. You know, then it's gonna reach the kids that need to hear this story, that need to hear, hey, I can have a best friend that's a soccer ball, a teddy bear. You know, sports is fun. Discipline is good. You know, the morals, the values that we were talking about. Um, so I, I might put it on Amazon, but I'm more going down that route of like, let's fund this nonprofit by ordering books and donating them to a good cause and getting this book in the hands of the kids that really need it. The kids that have no hope, that are have a lot of trauma. You know, I was just, just talking to the director at Serenity and she's like, you know, these are the kids that are swooped up by DTS or, you know, the they, they there's been domestic violence in the home and the cops come and pull them out and they're put in the system. They have severe trauma, you know, children's hospitals, kids that are, you know, in there with illnesses. Boom. Here's a little bit of hope. That, that's a, a wonderful idea to get your book out there. Is that a common practice or did you did you think of that, you know, yourself? I don't know if it's a common practice or not. Yeah, that's, it's just something that it's I hard to say because um, it's almost everybody's experience is individual at this level. Yeah, I mean that that's that's a, a great idea, you know, and, and getting it directly to the the kids who need it mm -hmm. in that way. Returning to, I mean, I, I think that that helps a lot with people who may be wanting to publish their own book. H how long did the process take? You know, from when you started working with, uh, I'm sorry, what's the illustrator's name again? Yuka. How long did that process take? And like, did you just, you gave her your script and you got returned all the illustrations? Uh, first draft was probably a month, you know, black and white sketches. Cool, let's move forward, change this. Um, that, Like I said, the, the longest process or the longest time period of waiting was the printing company. Um, it was pretty, easy and fast working with yuka to get you know the product done it was just waiting on the printing maybe four or five months from text to what it is now i mean i i like it it's very like uh kid friendly mm -hmm. right she did a good job and uh i i think she she captures a lot of the the emotions correctly or, or captures it well we, we ask each guest to bring an item of significance you've been on the show before uh what did you bring with you today? I brought the book. Of course. Can, can you show the 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 YouTube audience the book? And for the listening audience, it's the magic soccer ball. The magical can, soccer. I'm ball. sorry, the magical soccer ball. Can you go back to the the front cover? And so there's an image. And can you just describe the the cover image? It's not upside down, for y'all. This is what's called the bicycle kick. What's it's the where, bicycle kick? It's where you jump up, and the goal is behind you. Your goal that you're trying to score in is behind you. So I'm facing here, you jump up and do an acrobatic kick so that the ball goes that way. I don't imagine that's commonly done in, in, in a game setting. Oh, <laughs> common. but you've seen some great ones, uh, like I think Pele and... Yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah, look at Scott. Came yeah. I mean, it's, oh, I've, it's seen, rare, I've seen a banana, I've seen a bicycle kick yeah. in, in a game. It's, yeah. it's, it's not something that you see every single game, but when you see it, it's like, whew, you know, I've only scored one in my whole life. Well, you have tried, you know, thousands. Wow. Yeah. So, so that, that's the item I, I brought. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Those are great, great illustrations. Yeah. She did a little, 
character of me. Yeah. So as I was reading this, I was imagining, you know, reading it to my, my daughters mm -hmm. and, um, I, I can, like what I said to you after reading the book was like, I can imagine my youngest one memorizing the book and then telling it back to me, you know, cause she remembers like different parts of the storyline. And I would say like, that's, uh, definitely a book that she would be able to do that with. And she would, she would really enjoy that. Mm -hmm. I, like I said, I'm reading more children's books now. So do you have a favorite one, a favorite one? Uh, <coughs> the magical soccer book. <laughs> <laughs> that was the leading question. Well, I mean, I, I haven't read it to them yet, but um, the Magic Treehouse books, have you heard of that? No, I have not. So it's a series of books. There are chapter books, and each book has 10 chapters and maybe five or six pages per mm -hmm. chapter. Um, and it was the first chapter book series that I read with my, my older daughter where the, the treehouse is magical and takes them to different lands you know sometimes it's ancient egypt sometimes it's you know with dinosaurs sometimes it's you know medieval europe but um yeah they, they seem to enjoy that and it's it's sort of a transition from picture book to to chapter books where there's still pictures in there mm -hmm. um but yeah i enjoy that with them isn't it interesting how uh i don't know if you read children's books and you get a lesson out of it as <laughs> yeah. an adult but there's a lot of books <clears throat> movies like i'll go see children's movies and it's like there's messages in there for adults if you're willing and open to hear those messages absolutely you know? and it's the same thing with this like i gave it to one of my buddies that i play soccer with he has a kid and he read it and he was like oh i love this you know it was i i got something out of it you know? yeah absolutely i mean i think with the children's movies as well um what i get from the books is that children have so much wonder mm -hmm. you know they're they're, they're so interested in the world and things that are going on at, at a level that sort of gets, gets dulled as an adult, maybe even, you know, in your teens, that you just sort of lose this way of viewing the world. Mm -hmm. You know, not that things are new, but that things are- A sense are, of awe and enjoyment and taking pleasure in little things like seeing a bug crawl across yeah. you know, the table and just being, whoa, what's that, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, and I think, you know, great children's books they're obviously written by adults, but they they sort of are able to put themselves back into that mode of, of being, uh, you know, being a child been, themselves. That's right. Just yeah. like I said, you know, it's a lot of these guys that went through therapy or need therapy and it's their inner child crying out saying, Hey, let me out. I got some trauma. I'm here. <laughs> Hello. You know, yeah. is just getting in touch with that. I, I, I firmly believe we all have an inner child in us, you know, and, when we let them out, we're enjoying life and we can get back to that sense of awe and, and wonderment and enjoyment. And But like you said, we just, we push it down and we dull it because it's like, oh, I have to go do this podcast with Russell and Scott and go look professional, <laughs> and, you know? It's like, well, yeah. have you ever seen like, perfect example, you have a lady trying to cross the street, you know, she runs across and she's smiling just from running, you know? It's like, wow. Or you see somebody dancing, getting just free, getting back to that kid. It's like, in my opinion, is when we're the most happy, is when we're playing, you know? Why do we have gyms? Why do we have adult sports leagues? Is because we want to play, you know? We want to play. I know you're a fisherman. You're out there. You're fishing. You're in the moment. You're present. You're at peace, right? Absolutely. Otherwise, I don't think you'd be fishing. Yeah, one, one thing that my wife is helping me to to realize is to be more present and live in the moment and not think or live like i'm going to be happy when i'm going to celebrate when i'm going to fully take in life when and and there are so many stories of you know people retiring and then getting let's say you know terminal illness mm -hmm. within a year and they have been building up their life thinking like you know i'm really going to be happy i'm really going to take in life i'm really going to absorb all of this once i'm retired and everything's gone by then right mm -hmm. but can i be happy now can i be happy when i wake up in the moment uh and can and i find sorry to interrupt can i find joy happiness fulfillment in the process in the journey absolutely right yeah you know can i be present when i'm going through a hardship and shift my perspective and say okay this is a hardship that's eventually going to get me to a different level where i can help someone else out I think one of the problems with the process is that there's no tangible showing of what's happening. In other words, you're going through it, but mm -hmm. right now you're at the end of this project and you have a book, you have something tangible you can hold in your hand, you can give to somebody. 
And what's crazy is I didn't have that aha moment, you know, of like, oh, here it is. Like I was in so much anticipation that year and a half of like, let me get that tangible. Then I'll feel that peace, that happiness. And once it came, it was just like, now I have so much more to do. And I was like, okay, you know, I'm not searching for that end result anymore. It's like, let me enjoy this process and keep going. And like, now I'm out here researching orphanages and children's hospitals and just keeping it flowing, keeping it moving because I'm in that. Yeah. That's the next, that's the next stage sort of, Mm -hmm. but maybe you didn't have that aha moment. Do you, but do you now you, you look at that book and is it a symbol of pride? I mean, it's something that you did accomplish. I kept on saying like it hasn't hit me yet. It hasn't hit me. People saying, "Oh, you're a published author now. You're you're you know should be so proud." And it, it still hasn't hit me because it's like I don't want to get into that mind frame of, okay, now I can relax. Now I can kick back. You know, I got to keep working. Yeah, I see it, and you know, I get a little sense of of pride. But that's that's a dangerous, sticky area for me is to be like, wow. Yeah. You know, it's why can't you have that sense of wonder that a child has and pick up that book as if for the first time and just like be feel this sense of awe and wonder at what the book is, you know, because I'm grown. And when you're grown, you have all this other, you know, voices in your head. So when I pick this up immediately i'm thinking about like i have to go there i I gotta email the guy about getting the refund again or i know the the trials and tribulations i went into so you have all these other anchors that are attached to the book that are weighing me down i wish i could yeah you know just look at it and be like oh oh." because you're not a child but it's 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 more of like i want I, i get a lot of enjoyment when i see kids reading the book you know when i see people looking at it and just being like in that moment that's when i have that like oh okay yeah that's what i was going to ask you like i i love to cook Mm -hmm. um but if i break that down what i love is to share this experience or see the the experience shared with someone else right? right and so sometimes it's enough if they give me feedback later on but the best part of it is if i can serve it to them and I can, I can I can watch on their face and their body language how they're experiencing the meal that I've prepared for them. And, and that gives me like so much joy. I really love that. Yeah. So have you have you been present like at a, at a reading for a group of kids or have you heard your book read out loud to to a child? Um, yeah, when I delivered some books to a family, the boy read it and it was it was really cool to see, you know, his his two siblings and mom mom actually got a little teary-eyed um so i have seen that and that's one of the things i would like to do as well as do some readings at children's hospitals maybe not me personally but have someone come in and read it so that i can really take it in and and embrace what's going on you know see that wonderment at the book signing there was a little kid and his mom was reading the book to him and i got to enjoy that for a little bit of time um but i personally haven't read it to anybody you know? well, I guess that's uh you can experience the same thing as just to see their reaction to mm-hmm. to your story yeah wow that's yeah. that's really special mm-hmm. yeah I, I like to get into what what your plans are in the future for this book other than collecting your full refund and then the other books that you are planning in the future but let's take a quick break and we'll be right back to thank our sponsor Warmoth Law at Warmoth Law they believe that just because you speak a foreign language come from a different culture or simply don't know how to navigate the legal system, that should not prevent you from compensation from injury or receiving benefits. They've been helping SGVers like you for over 38 years. Visit law888.com or call them today at 626-784-7017 and tell them you heard about them on this podcast. All right, we're back with Paul. So Paul, uh, before the break, we were talking about, um, you know, what's in store, what, do you, what plans you have in store for this book and, and what are the ideas that you have in store for future books? So what I have planned for this book is hopefully, um, so waking up again early in the morning, my meditation, I, I would love to see this become a screenplay, love to see this on the big screen. Um, so trying to maneuver and check out avenues of who, how I get it into the right hands. Um, I talked to one director who is a client and obviously this 
isn't long enough for a movie so coming up with some ideas in my head that i'm going to put to paper and hopefully get it um one the world cup is going to be in the united states in four years and i think it would be a great time to roll out a soccer movie for kids about believing in yourself there's definitely the popularity in soccer these days especially with the women kicking butt and taking names um like i said sell a bunch to people 100 percent tax deductible through the nonprofit, and donate them to children's hospitals um and then obviously this is a soccer book so i have in my phone a baseball book with some morals and values and stories about two brothers pitcher and catcher and what they go through so i already have yuka my illustrator on board to do a series now that i've gone through the process i can maneuver it a lot better just need that funding it's not cheap to um, self-publish your own book Um, potentially reach out to some publishing companies and say hey look i have a finished product i've sold x amount of books on my own maybe we can collaborate on the next book if not i'll do it on my own baseball one i have the storyline for a football one where with an autistic kid and his relationship with football and coming up with these great plays um and then i would like to do one that's strictly a female character hero so you know just got ideas wow that's great those would be you know three great follow-ups to this Mm -hmm. yeah right yeah Yeah. Yeah, well i look forward to to seeing those in the future yeah um i definitely would wanted to uh, read read this to my daughters well paul now now you have the uh i would say i don't know if it's a difficult task but it was difficult for for me to come up with my own uh three favorite things in the sgv but now you have to come up with a a new three since you're a returning guest so <laughs> let's let's get into that so paul you're quick on your feet you're a soccer player you're gonna have to come up with three mm-hmm. sgv favorites and you've already had three from the previous show and which were, were lacy park uh uh, Peck Road Water Conservation. Yes. For fishing. And Little Flower Bakery. Little That's Flower right. Bakery. Okay. So my new three would be Burke Williams Day Spa. Uh, no <laughs> fair. I mentioned that to you. <laughs> Burke Williams is where Paul and I met mm-hmm. in Pasadena. Hey, you got to have a place where you can go and just... Whoosh, yeah, that's so true. I'm yeah. surprised I didn't say that the first time. Yeah, uh, yeah, actually, I am too, but... Yeah. Okay, but that is a good one. Yeah, so that's number one. Number two would Wait, be... So, so what, what is that, though, for people who don't know what it is? It's a day spa. You know, and hot tub, jacuzzi, uh, steam, sauna, showers, uh, just a place where you can go and... Get and, massages, get yeah, facials. You know, and, yeah. yeah. Pedicures, manicures. And that's in uh, Old Pasadena, like in an alleyway, I think, yeah. off of DeLacy. Mills, Mills, Mills Place. Mills Place. Yeah. Yeah. Number two would be Space Bar Wellness in Pasadena off of Colorado. I've gone there. Space Bar Wellness. Yeah. What is Have that? you done the ice bath? Ice bath? No, I've only floated. Oh, you did the separate uh, the flotation. Sensory. Yeah, yeah. That's amazing, right? Yeah, yeah. So they have um, uh, infrared saunas. That's really good for collagen and um, all kinds of health benefits. And they have an ice bath that is thirty-two degrees. And you go oh. in there, and, <laughs> and Russell has done those in real life in Canada. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah every day for how long did you stay in for? Oh, um, anywhere from at minimum thirteen minutes, Holy and smoke. at long maximum like twenty minutes. And 20 what minutes. was the um, temperature? Four, four degrees Celsius. So, I mean, not not so freezing, you know, but you it's know. a little bit over freezing. Yeah. Then. So yeah. you know that when you get in, you have that initial shock of like, <laughs> I'm going to die, I'm going to die, I'm going to die, I'm going to die. And then it's like you have a moment of like, I'm okay. This is just very cold. And if I can get comfortable being uncomfortable, imagine what I can do in life. Yeah, I, I, I very much uh, l- looked forward to it. Mm-hmm. It was very invigorating, energizing. Um but the moment like you actually have to get in there's always this like 
bracing, mm-hmm. you know, and you're, you you sort of have to force yourself. So when was the last time you did it? Um, probably a couple of weeks ago. I mean, here here I don't have the advantage of a Canadian winter, so right. uh, we would just freeze, alternate freezing different buckets, and so this huge, you know, chunk of ice would would go in the tub, and so we would do it at home, uh, my wife and I, and um, we had a, a pool thermometer so we can check the temperature. Wow. I believe you know to receive the effects on the brown fat. It only needs to be 42 degrees. It doesn't need to be as cold, but I, I like it to be colder. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you've never done it before, like your your where you have a lot of inflammation hurts the most. So like if you have a lot in your your feet or your shins and your hands, it's pretty painful until you you sort of acclimate to it. But mm-hmm. how yeah. long when you go to Space Wellness Bar? How long do you do the ice bath? Three minutes. Yeah, and and it's freezing 32 degrees. It's fr- it's fr- <laughs> well, excuse we, my language we we do it to the Give um, victoria a bunch of work to do <laughs> edit out all i the, i don't do we edit out swear words anymore i beep. mean i think we beep uh, oh we beep, beep them yeah, okay I'm sound like the road runner <laughs> <laughs> so they have a ice bath and then they have an infrared sauna right next to it so it's like go back and forth they have a full smoothie bar, acai bowls. They're really into functional mushrooms, lion's mane, turkey tail for health benefits. They have kava, which is a Polynesian root that you can drink. It's it's similar to, or not similar to, but has you know benefits if you don't drink alcohol. It gives you kind of like a euphoric sense. Um, it's a really an amazing space. They have upstairs personal training and I've gotten close with the owner. He's actually helping me get uh, a QR code that we're going to put on the back and it's going to say donate a book. So you scan the QR code so that when I donate all these books to children's hospital, someone can pick it up and say, oh, that's really cool. Like let's scan it and they can buy a book and have it donated to someone else or donated it, donated to um, an organization. Uh, and then I can keep track of people that, uh, have done that as well. And then send them a thank you and send them, you know, um, ideas for future books or ideas that I have. So he's, he's like me, a little hustler, entrepreneur, just what can I do? Is he there at the site usually? He is. He's usually there. He just opened up another, um, gym in, uh, Monrovia called entity, uh, gym. And he's really into health and wellness and so he's always on the go new ideas um yeah so space bar wellness would be number two where, where is that located space bar wellness colorado boulevard two doors down from earth cafe madison in colorado okay in between madison and el molino on the south end i don't know the exact address i apologize that's okay i think i, know, I think yeah. i get an idea of where that is yeah um, and a third and a third a third Norton Simon. Wow, that is yeah. funny. Norton Simon. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a great place. What's funny is that our guest just before you today also named Norton Simon. Okay, I'm going to take that back. <laughs> and that was the first the, the, time the, that it had been. It was, so yeah. today, two times. The Huntington Library. Okay. Is my alternate. Yeah. Huntington okay. Library. Okay. Well, that's uh, one that you certainly can't go wrong with. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, well, thank you f- uh, for coming on the show and for sharing Thanks this for book with me. us uh, and our listening audience. If someone wants to get a copy for themselves or they want to donate it or yeah, how, how can they go about getting this? Email me P A B L I T O L E D O U X at yahoo.com. You can call me six, two, six, three, seven, six, zero, six, eight, four. Yeah. I've shipped copies to Alaska and Japan and all over the world. If you want a, a personal copy, I'll handwrite a note in there for you, customize it. Um, yeah. Well, that's awesome. Well, Paul, thank you again for coming on the show and for sharing your story about this book and for sharing this book with the world and the, the children who uh, will really benefit from the, the story in there. And I hope that you get your, your book uh, into a, a movie. A movie. Yeah. yeah. That would be great. Yeah. Yeah. So thank, thank you for coming on the show again, Paul. Thanks for having thank me. Thank you. Yeah. Well, there you go, SG viewers. There's another episode for you. Uh, go check out this book, The Magical Soccer Ball. Please. Yeah. Get yourself yeah. a copy. Donate you know, several copies uh, yeah. to, to any uh, children who may need it. So. 
so many in need. Yeah. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And you can always reach out to us at sgvmasterkey.com. Until next time, we'll see you next week. Thanks for checking out another episode of the SGV Master Key. You can find the full back catalog of the SGV Master Key at sgvmasterkey.com and wherever you get your podcasts. This show was produced and edited by Russell Mono and Victoria Allers of Kind Monster Productions. Thanks again for listening or watching. We'll see you again real soon in the next episode. Nice mother. No, kind of mother.